If you follow this channel, chances are you've heard me talk about finasteride. This is on finasteride. Finasteride. And finasteride. 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 It's one of the most powerful medications that we have to combat male pattern hair loss. And it's the only pill approved by the FDA to prevent hair loss. It's been around since 1992, so we know a lot about it. Besides being available in pill form, finasteride is also available as a topical formulation. And interest in topical Topical finasteride has been on the rise. But is it right for you? Here's a brief refresher on finasteride as a hair loss treatment. Finasteride can significantly reduce the levels of DHT. DHT is what leads to our hair getting finer over time and eventually falling out. Finasteride helps preserve the hair that you have left or that you may have had transplanted. And it does this through its anti-androgenic effects. Remember that finasteride is not the same as monogamy. Minoxidil. Minoxidil stimulates hair growth, but it doesn't prevent hair loss to the same degree. Finasteride and minoxidil are often complementary when it comes to people experiencing hair loss, but they're not interchangeable. Keep in mind that minoxidil in the topical formulation is FDA approved, while finasteride in the oral formulation is FDA approved. Recent studies have looked at the combination of topical minoxidil and topical finasteride, and results tend to be better when they're applied together as opposed to just using one or the other. Recently, this year, there were two separate studies that were six months long and they looked at the efficacy of topical minoxidil and finasteride for the treatment of androgenic alopecia in men in randomized controlled and double-blinded studies. These were relatively small studies of 42 and 60 men in each of the studies with androgenic alopecia who were randomly assigned to one of three treatment groups. 5% minoxidil plus 0.25% finasteride, all topical, 0.25% finasteride, and 5% minoxidil as three separate groups. The hair density was assessed after three and six months. Both studies found that treatment with minoxidil and finasteride resulted in significant increases in hair density compared to baseline and the other treatment groups. So minoxidil and finasteride work better together than alone. And the tolerability and safety profile file were comparable. Even though finasteride has been gaining steam as a topical option more recently, it's actually been around for about 10 years, since about 2013. The theory is that topical finasteride might work directly on DHT conversion at the hair follicle level. In this way, you might be able to avoid unwanted side effects that you would typically get with the oral formulation. However, that's not the whole story. Finasteride is absorbed through the skin Skin, meaning that some of the finasteride that's applied topically is going to reach our bloodstream and other tissues. Is it this absorbed finasteride that's responsible for reducing the hair loss? Or is the topical finasteride acting on the hair follicle itself? Chances are both of these mechanisms are likely at play, and it becomes very difficult to differentiate which one of these has the primary role in reducing hair loss. A review in 2022 in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology evaluated whether topical finasteride is a safe and effective treatment for male and female pattern hair loss, and it looked at 32 different studies that met their inclusion criteria. Their conclusion was that topical finasteride may be an effective alternative for those concerned about the oral formulation's systemic side effects. Another review that emphasized studies on topical finasteride for male and female pattern hair loss published between January of 92 to January of 2020 also concluded that topical finasteride is a safe and promising therapeutic option, though they point out that continued research is needed. And an even earlier review in 2018 concluded that topical finasteride was effective at reducing both scalp and plasma DHT significantly. Preliminary results were safe and promising, but continued research was warranted for drug delivery and ideal usage. There was another large randomized double-blinded study that was six months long in 2022 and it looked at topical finasteride as a way to minimize systemic exposure in men being treated for androgenic alopecia. They hoped that a topical finasteride formulation would minimize systemic exposure by acting specifically on hair follicles benefiting the patient without unwanted side effects. They found that topical finasteride did improve the hair count significantly compared to placebo 
and it was well tolerated. Its effect was similar to that of oral finasteride, but with markedly lower systemic exposure. When it comes to topical finasteride dosing, the therapeutic concentrations range from 0.1 to 1%. Determining the right dose for topical use can be tricky. What works for one person might not exactly work for the next. I feel confident we went with a 0.3% concentration after reviewing the literature and also seeing what else was out there on the market. Unlike topical minoxidil, topical finasteride is a prescription only medication, meaning that you can only get it from a doctor. In terms of its application, it's generally used as a once daily type of application. It can be given as a solution, a gel, or sometimes a spray. If you decide to use topical finasteride, chemical safety is very important. Finasteride can cause birth defects in a male fetus. As mentioned previously, it can be absorbed through the skin and get into the bloodstream. So proper cleanup when using is very important. For this reason, finasteride is not intended for women who are pregnant or may become pregnant. So what are some reasons to consider topical finasteride over oral finasteride? Well, for one, there is data to suggest that topical use can yield positive results. We also know that it decreases the risk of systemic side effects. Side effects such as decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, and some other unwanted side effects. And the main reason for this is that there are lower concentrations in your bloodstream of finasteride when you use it topically compared to orally. Fewer side effects can be a big plus for patients who have suffered from side effects related to oral finasteride or who are extremely anxious about the side effects that they read on the internet, for example. Also, there's some preliminary research to suggest that higher doses of topical formulations of finasteride might be as effective as oral finasteride. Though this data is not conclusive, and clinically what I observe in my practice is that the oral formulation of finasteride is generally more reliable and consistent as far as preventing someone's hair loss compared to topical formulations. Meaning that I see generally less breakthrough of hair loss when people are on the pill compared to some of the topical options. Now let's talk about some of the potential downsides of choosing topical finasteride over oral finasteride. So whether you're using a gel, a spray, or a solution, there could be some material left behind on the scalp surface that might be irritating or just bothersome to some people. Another potential downside is that when you're on the topical finasteride, you need to be careful about contact that you might have with people who are pregnant or might become pregnant. Topical finasteride also might be less convenient. People often forget to apply the topical versus just taking a pill. So you need to stay consistent with the application of the topical finasteride. Some people find a pill to just be easier to take. Also keep in mind that topical finasteride is not without its own potential side effects. Though systemic side effects are generally less common, there might be some other side effects such as local itching or irritation of the skin. Also with topical finasteride, expect it to generally be less effective. You likely will not see the same gains as with oral finasteride at the standard dose. There are some people who point to the literature to say that topical finasteride is just as effective as the pill. And this is usually based on this small study from 2014 that set out to compare a newly developed finasteride of 0.25% topical solution to the well-known finasteride 1 milligram tablet. They specifically looked at DHT suppression in the blood plasma. This was a small study of 24 men and they did not evaluate hair growth or scalp DHT and only at a seven day endpoint. They found that plasma DHT was reduced by 75% with the topical solution and by 72% with the tablet with no relevant changes to plasma testosterone. So they concluded a strong and similar inhibition of plasma DHT after one week of treatment with the topical compared to the tablet finasteride formulations. But that doesn't mean that they work just as well. The study was definitely not long enough. One week is not long enough to figure out if these two are equivalent and the sample size was quite small. It was a promising set of results that does signal that more research is warranted. But what I can tell you anecdotally from my clinical practice is that most people 
people who take one milligram of finasteride a day do not see hair loss. Whereas if you have patients on the topical formulation of finasteride, a higher percentage will experience a continued progression of their hair loss. And then we might have to sometimes up titrate them to the oral formulation of finasteride. So in my clinical practice, I still start patients on the standard one milligram of oral finasteride for preventing progressive hair loss. I do this to maximize their chances of success and also because we know through decades of research that finasteride is overall quite well tolerated. I will consider the topical formulation of finasteride in two main instances. One is that a patient may have proven side effects from oral finasteride even when we've tried to reduce the dose and the frequency of taking that oral finasteride. And the second use case is someone who comes to me highly anxious about the potential side effects of finasteride based on the research that they may have done. And they will sometimes refuse to take finasteride, but when I present them with the possibility of using topical finasteride, they'll at times be more open to that suggestion. So I'd rather them be on some form of finasteride rather than no finasteride at all if they're looking to protect their hair for years to come. One day it would be nice to have a head-to-head -head study of topical finasteride versus oral finasteride, but I do think it's going to be difficult to conduct such a study based on the fact that these are generic medications and it's unlikely that there would be enough funding to do a study of that nature. So I feel confident we developed our own topical finasteride in collaboration with a compounding pharmacy that has a focus on skin and hair products. We wanted to give people another option for their hair restoration journey. The majority of companies that offer topical finasteride do so in combination with topical minoxidil. So they'll put finasteride and minoxidil into the same mixture. And whether it's a spray or a solution, it's put in there together and you can only apply it if you're applying both at the same time. But many of our patients find benefit in oral minoxidil. And when they're on oral minoxidil, they no longer need topical minoxidil. So when they're looking at their finasteride options, they might wanna combine oral minoxidil with standalone topical finasteride. So we wanted them to have a nice, pure topical finasteride option to pair with oral minoxidil if that's what they're on. The concentration of this finasteride is 0.3% and it's delivered as a solution. So it's a one ml per day application of topical finasteride. This topical formulation has the following advantages. For one, it has low residue. So after you apply the topical finasteride, you don't really feel like there's much on the surface that's left over. The solvent that's used to deliver the finasteride evaporates very quickly. And another benefit is that finasteride itself is fast absorbing in this formulation. And lastly, the formulation is polyethylene glycol free. PEG, which is used in many formulations is a known skin irritant. So it makes sense to leave that out of the formulation. Keep in mind that to get topical finasteride from Feel Confident, you need to be within the United States. So go ahead, fill out a questionnaire, talk to a physician and get the medication delivered to your door if you're a good candidate.